Yeah. Okay. Lesson 11.5. Okay. We, exactly. <laughs> We're going to start into the notes. And I'm going to suggest that you start the homework tonight. And then we will finish notes as necessary tomorrow. And, you know, my plan was to start notes today, finish them tomorrow. We'll see where you guys are at. Okay? Where you're at on understanding. So, today we are solving equations. Solving rational equations. Which means, yes, they are rational equations. They have lots of fractions in them. But our first job is going to be to get rid of the fractions. Okay? That way you can quit giving it the evil eye. I'm watching that evil eye over there. Okay, so our job is going to be get rid of the equations. This relates to yesterday's notes. In that, in order to get rid of the equations, or the fractions, we want to find the common denominator and multiply by it. So my first question on these problems is going to be, if you were getting a common denominator, what would be the least common denominator? Yes. There's a 3, and then we talked yesterday that when getting a common denominator, if the exponent is the same, we use that exponent, right? So we're going to, if not, we'd use the bigger exponent. So our least common denominator is 3x. So what that means I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by 3x. Now, let's see. This is algebra 1. This is more of a beginning class. I'm trying to decide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my equation out. And I'm going to kind of space it out here. And I'm going to put the 3x in front. Because what we do, this 3x multiplies by everything. We're going to multiply it by the 1 third. We're going to multiply it by the 3 over x. And we're going to multiply it by the 2 over x. So what I just did there is I kind of spaced my equation out. Every term I'm going to multiply by 3x. Now let me ask, what is 3x as a fraction? Um, he's going to, what did you say, throw a 1 under it? Yeah. So 3x, so we're going to do 3x over 1 times 1 over 3. I'm going to do 3x over 1 times 3 over x. And I'm going to do 3x over 1 times 2, two over x. So you're multiplying every piece of the equation by 3x. Well, that's why I had, huh? I like that, so it's oh, well, that's why I rewrote my equation down below and spaced it out. So now, get that written out, and then the whole idea here is that there should be some canceling happening. Stuff cancels, and our fractions should go poof. There you go. So on the first set, 3 over x times 1 over 3. What cancels between the numerator and the denominator? The ones. Besides oh, the ones. The threes. The threes. If the threes cancel, what remains? X. Oh, x. x times 1, which is x. x. Plus. Okay, now repeat the next part. What cancels numerator and denominator? Yeah, there's an X on top, an X on bottom. What remains? 3 times 3, which is 9. Carry down my equal sign. What cancels? X cancels with the X. What remains? 3 times 2, which is 6. That went from being a very ugly equation to a very easy equation. No, no, I messed that up. My bad. I looked that way too quickly for my brain to properly. I just if it's x plus 9, I'm going to... Yeah. 
subtract 9. And 6 minus 9 is? Negative 3. X equals negative 3. There we go. Okay. That's, that's the gist of every single problem we're doing today. Obviously, some of them aren't going to become quite that nice when we get to the end. But they'll definitely be nicer because we'll get rid of fractions. That's our goal here. Okay. Ready to try the next one? Okay. My first question on every problem. What would be my least common denominator if I was getting a common denominator? So 3 and 3 are the same. But 3 and 7 both multiply into 21. The x's have the same power, so we're going to use 21x. So what do I do with that 21x? Multiplying both sides of our equation by 21x. Now, maybe you don't need to, but for the process of we're essentially beginners, I'm going to space, I'm going to write my equation out. 4 over 7x plus, and I'll leave gaps in front of each thing, 1 over 3 equals 7 over 3x. And I left a gap in front of each term so I can put what I'm multiplying by. What am I multiplying by? 21x to make it a fraction over 1. So I'm writing 21x and over 1 in front of each of the three terms. Okay, you got it? So, just like last time, we're trying to figure out what cancels. Okay, so x cancels with x. I think I want a different color here. What else cancels? Because the whole idea is fractions should be gone. I should have no denominators left. Oh, uh, 7. I guess I've been 21. That does something. How many times? Three. Three times, right? So... My denominator is 7. 7 divides by 7 to be 1. 21 divides by 7 to be 3. So we have a 3 left on top and a 4 left on top. 3 times 4 is 12. Plus. Next one. 21 over x, or 21x over 1, times 1 over 3. Uh, 21 3, 7. Okay, so there's a 3 in common, yes? Yeah. 3 divided by 3 becomes 1. It's gone. 21 divided by 3 is? 7. 7. What remains then? 7 times 1. Not just 7 times 1, though. 7 oh, x. x. Okay. So watch out for that x. Equals 21x over 1 times 7 over 3x. Oh, um. Well, 7, 3, and 21, they all go into. Seven and three both Okay, but only look denominator to numerator. Those x's cancel. Okay, x on bottom cancels with x on top. Three on bottom, three divides by three and is one. Twenty-one divides by three and is seven. seven. Okay, and then the sevens aren't canceling because they're both on top. They're multiplying. Seven times seven is 49. 
Okay, this equation isn't quite as easy as the last one. However, it's not horrible. How do I get x by itself? Yeah, to get 7x by itself, subtract 12 to begin with. 12 minus 12 cancels. 7x equals 49 minus 12? 37. 37. If it's 7 times x, I'm going to divide by 7. It's an ugly number? So here's my answer. 37 sevenths. If it doesn't divide nicely, if it doesn't simplify nicely, then we're just going to go 37 sevenths. Excuse me. Maybe we can get through this next one. Maybe we can't. I'm not 100% sure. We'll try it. 5 over x squared equals 6 over x minus 1. My question to you. What kind of least common denominators? I have denominators of <coughs> x squared and x. So for a least common denominator, we go with the highest power. My highest power is x squared. So that is x squared. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by x squared. So I'm going to split, I'm going to spread my equation out. 5 over x squared equals, I'm going to leave a gap in front of 6 over x minus. I'm going to leave a gap in front of 1, which what is 1 as a fraction? Well, nah, we won't worry about it. Okay, and we're multiplying by x squared. What is x squared as a fraction? x squared over 1. So I'm multiplying all three pieces of this equation by x squared. I made the first two x squareds over 1 because they were fractions. The third one I just left as x squared because it wasn't a fraction. Now, if you want to put those all over 1s, you can. Okay. Canceling time. X squared on top. X squared on bottom will cancel, leaving me with 5. That's nice, at least. X squared over 1 times 6 over X. What cancels, though? Oh, I wrote that wrong. I put 6 over 6 for some reason. Oh. That's a problem. Yeah. Okay. So the 1x on bottom cancels with 1x on top. So in other words, the x on bottom cancels. When you have x squared and you cancel out or divide out 1x, what remains? x what? x to the first. Because if it's x to the second and you take away 1x, we're going to have now x to the first. I got messy, sorry. And so we have an x to the first and we have a 6. So x times 6 is 6x. Minus, we have an x squared and a 1. If you make them fractions, they're just over 1s. There's nothing we need to cancel, so x squared times 1 is going to be x squared.
three than before. There will be two dreams. There will be an FCA, F, I'm sorry, FFA meeting tomorrow before school from 7 to 7.40 in Ms. Cruz's room. Any junior girl interested in participating in who's your girl today, you can stop by the guidance office as soon as possible. Any current junior or sophomore interested in hearing about the new IEP at the Cosmo Career Center, also you can stop by the guidance office for more information. I do tech is sponsoring a spring science fair for students grades 9 through 12. For more information, stop by the guidance. Math ISEP testing will be tomorrow and Friday at 8 a.m. Please don't forget to be checking your emails for additional scholarships and college information. Oh. At last night, we have Jamie and Marcia Girls Basketball at West Hill. So if you'd like to talk to the girls. Thank you. Have a great evening. Okay. She kind of took part of my time here. Notice I have an x squared, an x, and a number. This is a quadratic equation. We're going to want to make it equal to zero because we're going to factor it. Okay. So. No time. We should stop here in this awkward place and pick up tomorrow? Yes, absolutely. Okay, awkward stop, but we can pick up tomorrow. Um, you can start looking at homework. This is a problem. You can get a few done, maybe, but probably not a whole lot. So.